Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to our one hour workout today on using workflows to automate your process. So one of the most exciting parts of the CRM is that we can use it to simplify our life and make things easier and let the CRM do the hard work for us. Uh, but often it's, uh, it's something that can seem complicated at first and, uh, and maybe you're a little, um, a little afraid to go in there and, uh, and play about with it. So hopefully this, um, this workout is going to help you get started with workflows if you're not already using them. Um, as always with our one hour workouts, I'm just going to uh, get us all warmed up with some polls. So uh, let me just launch into those polls now and then you can answer those. So first of all, how would you rate your expertise using Zoho CRM? Let's see what we get back here. Oh, we've got some true experts coming in this morning. I think our top score last week, we had an average of 2.6 last week. So let's have a see where this is going. Yeah, we've got a few ratings coming in. Excellent. Oh, so we have got some true experts on this week with a, an overall rating of three. So we're ready and good to go with our workflows. And uh, let's have a look at this one. So which workflows have you used already, if any? Let's. You can select as many of these as you like. So if you've used macros in the past, select that, trigger-based, date-based, and score-based workflows. And these are the ones we're going to be going through today. Excellent. So we've got, we've got plenty of people use triggers. Some people use date-based. Not very many of you use macros, and they're really easy. And uh, oh, a very small amount using score-based, which I'm impressed with, because I'm going to cover some of that one today. OK, super stuff. Thank you very much. And uh, let's have a look at some of the reasons for implementing workflow into your CRM. So this really does give us our kind of objectives for today. So it is all about all of these things, but um, let's have a look. So yeah, we've got a good spread here, which is brilliant because we're going to be covering we're going to be covering most of these scenarios. And a couple of people not sure, which is absolutely fine. Um, that's what our workouts are all about is turning those not sure how you're going to use them into, oh, I could use it for exactly this process. Brilliant. Thank you very much. That's perfect. So the main one being improving process, which um, which if you use workflows will definitely do that. So I'm going to show you some of that today. And uh, I was just interested in this one. So have you attended our one hour workouts before? Uh, we've only just started them again for 2021 with our new um, setup. Um, but you may have attended in 2020 as well. We've got some newbies today, but 80-20. And uh, of course, the loaded question, yes, you love them. Um, there wasn't a yes, but I'm only here for the pain and suffering that a one-hour workout brings. I didn't provide that option. So uh, it's just, yes, you love them. Brilliant. So 80%, 20% of, um, of people have been before and will be kind and gentle to the newbies today. OK, and then the final poll, just so we get all warmed up and ready to go, is how long has your business been using Zoho CRM? So uh, let me just get a gauge on where we are with that. Thanks for filling out these polls, by the way. It's brilliant. Really cool. So we got some, this ties in with the point, with the three points experience, because we've got mainly users who are six to 12 months or one year plus. So that's fantastic. And and actually, it's it's a great time. You know, if you've been using it six months or so, it's a great time to start introducing process into your CRM, because you'll have a good idea about your repeated processes and, and what you do on a day day to day basis. And so now is a good time to start introducing that workflow. Super stuff, right? We're all warmed up and ready to go with the workout. So let me just talk you through the plan today. Um, as always, uh, your one hour workout coaches are um, myself on today, uh, although Duncan will be hosting plenty during 2021. Uh, he's in the background today on Q&A session. Um, so he's ready to take all of your questions and just, you know, find the really tough ones, really hard questions over to Duncan. He loves the hard questions. Um, and uh, and you got me on online today uh, until 11 o'clock. We'll try and save some time at the end um, if I need to come in with any other interaction, but it is a fairly packed agenda today with um, with what I want to show you. So let's move on to that agenda. So here's our one hour workout plan today. We've already done the warm up polls. Um, the first thing I'm going to show you is how to create a personal macro. So macros will, will allow you to create your own workflow uh, without having um, uh, you know, your administrative privileges in the in the back end of Zoho to create the other more complex workflows. 
I'm then going to show you how to build a sales process. Uh, now, if um, uh, most of my, most of our clients will have a sales process in place, but this will allow you to edit the one that we've already created for you, or indeed go in and refine it or create a new one if you've not already got one in place. Um, and then I'm going to show you some automation based on date-based workflows, um, which allow you to manage um, what happens on certain dates. So this can be handy for uh, things like renewals or birthdays or anniversaries, um, but anything that needs to happen as a result of a date occurring. And, uh, and then I'm going to focus on the final one, which is a score-based workflow, which can really help your, your lead building process. Um, so I'm going to very, very briefly touch on lead scoring because we've got that as part of another one-hour workout, but um, I'll show you how you can base uh, workflows based on score. And then we'll cool down with a nice gentle Q&A and some of those tough questions. Okay, so let's uh, let's dive straight into our test system. Those people who've been on um, our sessions before will know that we use uh, No Frills Gig Management, Duncan and I's um, future music and gig management company, uh, to demonstrate the features of the one-hour workout. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to work on what we call a macro. And they're very, very straightforward workflows that allow you to repeat um, processes that you, that, you, that you might do each and every day, or you may do a few times a day. But I'm going to show you, first of all, how to create a very, very simple macro. So let's go to a contact. And uh, we've got this contact here called Tavis. And um, in here, we want to, I just want to show you what the macro is going to do. And you can see I've already got some examples in here. So to start a macro, Click on the three dots at the top, and here you've got the op option to run macro. And the one we're going to run is gig management. So when we click on run gig management, that's going to show us the following actions that are going to be executed as a, as a result of running that macro. So first of all, it's going to update the latest email field will be updated. It's then going to send an email using the gig management template. And it's going to add a task with the subject follow up on gig management email. So it's going to do all three of those things when we run this macro. So let's try that. We're going to run it. And of course, it shows you the three green ticks. It's quite a neat interface. And then all of a sudden, you'll see that I've already run this once before. So we've got a new task being created to follow up on the gig management email. We've got the latest email has been created as uh, gig management. And if I go to the timeline, it's going to show me that the email was sent as well. And um, if we go to our email client for, um, for Tavis, which is one of these temporary ones, then uh, in a second that will appear in this uh, inbox. And we'll come back and check those when we come back and check the emails. So let's, um, let's create a macro so you can see um, how to do that. It's very, very easy. So let's go into a contact record. And from where we ran macro before, we've also got the ability to create or manage our existing macros. So let's create a macro. And this one is going to be our tour management. And uh, we're going to try and do the same three things. So we're going to send an email. I'm going to select the template. And the only one I've got available is gig management. We're not covering templates today, but I could go and create a new email template and Duncan will be covering those in a future one hour workout. So I'm going to select my gig management one and select it there. I'm then also going to update the field. So I'm going to update my latest email field and this time I'm going to change it to tour management. So if I'd sent the tour template, I'm going to um, uh, force the field to tour management and then I'm going to add a task which is going to be this time follow up on tour management. And the due date is going to be two days after the macro has run, although we could change that to be any number of days, but two days is the default. We can place it in a not started status. We can change the priority and we can assign it to anybody in the CRM. But in this case, well, OK, let's assign it to Duncan. We can also notify them and remind them. Same day as due date. Let's add that. Let's put in a time. We're going to remind them at half, half midnight. And we're going to add the task. So now we've created a very simple macro, which will send the email, update a field, 
and create a task for Duncan. Also, this section as well, if you want other users to use this macro because you think it's, um, it's going to be really handy for them, then select the other users and you can select all users in the CRM or you can choose to select which users would use that macro. So it might be people in your team. And let's create it. So now we've got our two macros, which uh, this is the manage macros element. We can come in and edit and change any, anything that we want to change in that macro. So let's give it a try. We'll click on our contacts and we're going to check, click on Tavis. And this time, instead of the gig management email, we're going to um, run the macro. And our new one, our tour management macro is available. I'm going to click on tour management. That's going to do the same things. It's going to update the latest email field, send an email, and create a follow up task for tour management. And let's run that macro. And that gives us our three checks and then refreshes the record. And you can see now we've got follow up on tour management. The email has been sent. So here's our different emails going out. And I'll show you those results in the uh, email client that I, have that I have available. And then our open activities, we've now got follow up on tour management and the two gig managements that I did earlier. So macros are a really easy way of implementing personal workflow into your systems and processes and where you've got those repeated tasks and repeated emails and everything else going on it's a very very straightforward way of, of doing that uh, just general crm stuff when you've actually gone and completed those activities then you can just click on the green check mark if you click this don't show again and mark has completed then they'll just drop off into your closed activities below so it's a very easy to do list. So if you think about combining a macro with follow up tasks and then a to do list in the open and closed activities, then you can see already that we're starting to build a process into into our contacts. OK, so that's the first very simple one, which um, is often, you know, it's, it's often not used. So creating personal ma macros to simplify your daily process is is one of the first things that we want to show you today. I'm just going to hop over to the Q&A because I can see it's um, it's read there. Ah, it's doing saying bring in the hard questions. So um, so first things first is um, if you've got any questions on macros, then do fire them in and Duncan will do his best to answer them. OK, so let's move on to the um, on to the, the, the nuts and bolts of building the workflow itself. So this time we're going to concentrate on building a sales process with trigger based workflows. So let's just go in and do that. And I'll show you and explain how it's going to happen. So within our deals, which is our sales pipeline, um, we currently have no sales process in place. And what we're, what we're going to explain with this is we're going to build a sales process for our stages. Now, every CRM that we built has, um, has the stages. And those stages define your sales process. And what we're trying to achieve is that at each point of the sales process, something needs to happen. And normally what we what we would suggest, um, let's do this in the manual way so we can identify what problem we're trying to solve here. So we're, we're entering our deal uh, for tour management and our account name is going to be the who. And um, it's in currently in qualification and we expect this to close by the end of February. So we've recorded a new deal here some uh, uh, as part of our sales process. I'm going to save that one. And here is our pipeline. So these are the stages that we go through to get this deal from qualification through to closed one or closed lost. And normally we can just step through this and we can move it into initial meeting and we can go to build proposal. And what might happen when we move it into build proposal stage is we think actually we need to generate that proposal. So what you may do is go to open activities and create a task to create proposal. And you want to do that by um, the end of the week, and you're going to prioritize it as high. So that's a perfectly acceptable thing to do. So now in this deal, we're in build proposal stage, and we need to create the proposal. And then when we've done it, again, we can go through and check the box, and that will become one of our closed activities. So that's a perfect way of managing your deals through the cycle, and, uh, and something that we very much promote when we're um, deploying and training for Zoho CRM. But what we want, what we might want to do is define the actual sales process for all of our users and just make it really easy to create these tasks and send follow up emails and everything else. So that's where we're going to build a 
sales process uh, as part of this workout. So let me explain that. First of all, how do we get there? So you get to our workflows and you will need certain administrative uh, privileges to do this. Um, but if you're not the administrator in your system and you want to build workflows, then do, do speak to uh, your administrator and they should be able to help you out. Click on the setup icon and uh, workflow is in this section here, the automation section. If ever you're struggling to find anything in the setup, then as always in Zoho, you can just start to search and it will bring up the, the section that you wish to do, which wish to work in. So let's click on the workflow rules and that will bring up our workflow rules screen. And you can see here that I've got um, currently three workflows that have been defined. So let me just talk a little bit about the navigation of this screen as well, because there's some there's some nice features in here while we're here. And the first one is that we can search for any workflow by just again typing in and that will filter down our workflows to the ones that we want to see. So it's a really easy way if you've got a, a lot of workflows in here, it's a really easy way of finding the ones that you want to work with. And also as well, if we separate it out by module, so let's just look at our leads, then we can also filter it down by module. When you've done this, you've then got the ability to use this nice feature, which is the summary view. And that will expand out the workflow in the list of them um, so that you can very clearly see what's happening with each workflow. And so that's just a really sort of general hint when you get more and more workflows and they become a little bit trickier to manage, then you're able to filter this view and find the one that you're working with. So let's go back to the regular one. We're going to all modules. And, uh, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the sales process one, which is a trigger based workflow. OK, so let's uh, start. We're going to create rule. And uh, you have to select the module from which this rule is going to be initiated. So you've got to try and think about this. If you want it to be a contact based workflow, for instance, it's going to send an email to a contact when a certain field changes, then you would have to do it from the contact module. In this case, we're doing it from the deal module or the sales or the opportunity or the bookings or the um, transactions or whatever it is that you've called it in your CRM. Uh, the default is deals. So that's what we're going to use. And this rule name is our sales process. And let's click on next. OK, and that's going to open up this wizard. And, you know, the nice thing about Zoho CRM is that it doesn't make things overly complex. You can generally work your way through a wizard to, to get the end results that you need. So you can now see that the basis for the agenda today is based on these three triggers. So when do you want to execute this rule? And we've got the first one, which is on a record action. So that means that we're changing or creating or deleting or doing something with a record. So that's the first the first trigger that we're, we're going to be covering. And then the next one is on a certain date or time. And then the final one is based on a score. So let's select a record action and see what be becomes available. So in this case, when we're when the trigger, so this trigger is uh, one of these record actions, then that's when the workflow is going to initiate. So let's assume that it's just creation. So this will only trigger when the record is created. So for instance, creating a new contact or creating a new deal or creating a new lead. So that has to be a brand new record in order for this to trigger. The second one, create or edit, is more commonly used. So this is when the record is either created or any of the fields are edited. So it's a really easy way of capturing everything um, to do with a record being either created or changed. The issue with this one is that it will initiate every time a field is changed and you may not want it to, to it, it takes up resources in the CRM to be able to do that each time. So there is a downside to it, but it is the capture role. And then you'll also see this checkbox appear to repeat whenever a deal is edited. So if, for instance, it's what we're doing now, which is a sales process, then we can we can check if we if the stage changes once and then changes back again, we still want the action to take place. But in some cases, for instance, if you're sending an email to a contact, you may only want that to happen once. And so you wouldn't check the repeat in that case. The third one is the kind of opposite of these. So not creation, but only when the record is edited. So it's the same as these two, but without the creation rule. And then the fourth one is often quite handy. This one gets rid of the inefficiency of creating or editing. So in this case, you're only going to trigger this workflow when 
a certain field, so stage, and we can choose up to three fields when stage is updated. So in other words, when somebody updates a certain field, then that's when this workflow is going to initiate. And then the final one, which we don't use very often, is when the record is deleted. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on create or edit, and we're gonna do a repeat. Um, so this is for our sales process, whenever we create a new deal, or we edit a new de a deal, then this, this workflow is going to initiate. Let's click on next. So the next is when is this trigger, when is this workflow going to apply? And we're, there's usually always some criteria. So if you're gonna select all deals, then whenever you create or edit a deal, this workflow is going to initiate, and that's not often the case. There's usually always a condition. So deals match in certain condition. We're gonna go in and we're gonna put stage is qualification. So our first stage and click on next really is as simple as that. So what, let's just recap. Whenever the, whenever the deal is created or edited and the stage is qualification, we know we want to do something. And in this case, I'm gonna talk through a few of these if I get time, but in this case, we're gonna create a task because this is our sales process. So the task in this case, it will bring up our task wizard. We're gonna create a new one and we're just gonna go qualify deal. And if I go for and I hit the hash symbol, that will bring up the fields that we can populate for the task. So when I hit the hash symbol, this will say qualify deal for and then target cloud will be inserted in here. So it makes our activities very contextual. When we put in the due date, it will take the date at which it was triggered. So when that workflow instigates, and then we can put in our plus two days or five days or seven days or whatever the um, amount of time is to complete this task. It will drop dip by default into not started status, a priority of high, and it will assign it to the record owner, which is usually the case, although you could assign it to another person in the CRM. We can also notify and remind should we want to. So let's save that one. And then I'm just gonna show you this very simple workflow in action. So if we recap again, whenever a deal is created or edited and the stage is qualification, then we're gonna create this task to qualify for the deal. So let's save that one. And we're gonna to go to our deal and we're gonna create a new one. And let's fill out some of the details. So this is gigs in London is the deal. And it's gonna be with the who. And I'm gonna put an amount in of 10,000. We're gonna close it by the end of the month. And then importantly, the stage here is qualification. Let's save that. And this will initiate the workflow. Now you can already see that because it's created this task here. So open, qualify the deal for the who. And just to show how that's happened, if you then go to the timeline, you'll be able to see that the deal was created. And then immediately after, the task qualify deal for the who, which is the title of that task, was assigned to me, Craig Shelley, by the workflow sales process. So the timeline shows us exactly what's happened with that deal. If I also show you the edit version now, so let's go to this gig management one here, which is in the stage of negotiation. If I click on the deal and we change the stage to qualification, and then let's just refresh the record. So now this one, because it's been edited to qualification, has, has initiated the workflow. So now, same principle, the qualify deal for Oasis has been created in my activities from the workflow. So the create or edit rule is kicking in. Okay, let's go back. And we're gonna go back to my workflow. And we're now gonna build out this sales process. So here we've got stages, qualification, and the task you've just seen. So I'm now going to add another condition. And this time we're gonna do the next stage. So stage is initial meeting. And click on next. And again, create a task, new task, set up initial meeting with and then again if you type if you click the hash symbol we can do account name and we're going to give ourselves seven days to do this one and it's not started 
and let's um, let's assign Duncan to this task and save and associate. What we can also do is add additional actions. So you can see that when we click on actions, we can add up to five actions in this in this um, uh, in this wizard. So let's also go task. Sorry, not task. I didn't want to do that. Action tag. And we're going to add a tag to the record. And we can now add a tag of initial meeting. And that's created a new tag. And let's click on save. So now you can see two actions as a result of initial meeting. So again, what I like to do when I'm building these workflows is just save it and then go back to our deals and just test that workflow that we just created. So let's go back to the deal. And we're now going to move this one to initial meeting. Let's refresh the record. And so you'll see now we've got our setup of the initial meeting. And we've also got our tag in here of initial meeting. So let's check that in the timeline. The task was updated with set initial meeting sales process and also the tag added initial meeting again from sales process. So very easy to do that. Let's go and complete this now with some other examples of what we can do with our workflows. So in here, we're going to add another condition. And this time we're going to Click on our stage again. And we're going to choose our third one, build proposal. And click on next. And this time we can do a field update. And we can do new update. And I'm going to do set next step to build. Or um, write proposal. And so we can choose a field then, next step. And we'll actually put in some text there, build the proposal. So this time we've got a field update. But like we did before, we're also going to do a task, new task, and build proposal for account name. OK, and we'll give ourselves seven days to do the proposal. Let's save that one. And then we're going to add in another one, the stage. You can see how easy this is. We're going to go straight to closed one. Next. And this time we're going to create a task for our finance team. So we're going to create a task to invoice and hashtag account name. Uh, we're going to give them three days to send the invoice. And we're going to select our finance user. In this case, we've only got me or Duncan to choose at this point. So Duncan's also going to look after the finance section. OK, so you can see that it's closed one and the task is now an invoice. And let's also go in and add a tag for invoice ready, which the finance team could then do a report on so they can see which invoices are ready to go. OK, so now you can see in this workflow, we've got four conditions. We've got qualification, initial meeting, build proposal um, and close one. And we've got different actions for each of them. Let's save this. And uh, we can go back and test it. And I'm going to show you how this tests now with the uh, Kanban view, which we always promote as well. So when we're in our Kanban, we can see all of our deals. And um, you'll be able to see uh, which deals are in which column. If you've not seen this before, we're going to be covering this in uh, certainly in other sections. But now you can see this one here, uh, tour management. We're going to cl click and drag this one over to our initial meeting. And that's going to automatically create the tasks in the same way that it did with the workflow. So set up the initial meeting and it's going to tag the record and so on. And now we're going to move it to build proposal using the banner. And so that one's going to update the next step to build proposal. You can see that happening live. That was a new feature that Zoho introduced uh, at the back end of last year. And then we can go to closed one. And we need an amount for this one. Let's go 1,000. And so that's going to create our final stage, uh, which was to set the task for the invoicing team. So let's refresh the record and see the results. So now in our activities, we've got the invoicing, which is assigned to Duncan, our finance manager. We've got set the initial meeting, which is assigned to Duncan, and building the proposal. So you can see now when we go through this, we're going to go, yep, yeah, we've done all this. 
and we've built up the perfect sales history. So in our closed activities, we can see everything that's occurred. Um, and um, we can also see in the stage history where it's gone through each of those processes. So that, um, that shows us a perfect way of using workflow to map our sales process out. And when you deploy this, it really helps the salespeople to know exactly what's coming next at every single stage. Um, just, to, just as a point of mention as well, we've only really covered tasks and uh, tags, the simple, simple elements of the workflow. But you will have also noticed, the um, sharp eyed amongst you, that if we add another action, you can also do some more complex stuff, which I'm not covering today, um, but we can cover in one-to-ones. You can also create new records. So that might be you create a quote record or you create a custom record uh, as a result of the workflow. You can also initiate a webhook, which will allow you to integrate to other third-party systems. So for instance, if you had an invoicing system, then at this stage, um, which is something we do quite regular when it's closed one, you, we, we may ha add a webhook that generates the invoice in zero. And then finally, we can run a custom function, which allows us to do pretty much everything within, uh, within Zoho on a custom basis. So there's lots of different options. Um, and uh, it's very easy to go and have a play with these workflows and just uh, trial and error it in the same way that I did initially. So build the first condition, go and test it, build the second condition and go and test it and so on. Uh, once you're in this here, I'm just going to show you some um, of the navigation when you're in the workflow. We can lock it so that it's, um, nobody else can change it. We can clone it. So if you want to go in and, uh, and repeat this process but have a play, you can clone it and, uh, and make a second process. We can deactivate it so it doesn't initiate, but you may want it in the future, or indeed you can delete it. What's also, what's also useful is you might also want to go in and add some description in here. So this is the uh, sales process for managing uh, tasks in our pipeline. And if you get get used to doing this with your workflows, then as they build up, it'll be a lot easier to manage them in the future. Okay, so that explains trigger-based workflows, um, which is possibly the most complex one, um, but hopefully, hopefully that's given you a flavor as to how to build those. Okay, so let's move on to the second example, um, which is automating. We've got tour information with date-based workflows. So these are really handy when you want to do something as a result of a date occurring. So not a record changing or a record updating. These are always based on date fields. So let, let me give you the example of which, um, which we've got here. So we've got our tour management start. So let me just open this one up and we'll explain it. So in this case, the, it was still working within our deals module and the rule will be executed on a tour start date at 10.30. So let's just edit that one and I'll show you the rule that sits here. So we're gonna execute it on the tour start date. Now this could be changed so that it's before and let's say a uh, closing date if it's a sales process. And it may be three days before the closing date we wanna send um, uh, an email to the client that says is all the paperwork prepared or something like that. But uh, essentially it's based on a date. So we're gonna change this back to our on uh, the tour start date, which is a custom field, as you can see, because the tour start date wouldn't normally be in the CRM. And we're gonna execute it at 10.30 a.m. And it's gonna occur once. And we could repeat it every month or every year if it's a regular email that goes out from the CRM. Um, if you're doing, uh, be aware, if you're doing this uh, on a marketing basis, then don't forget to include uh, your GDPR settings if you're sending out regular notifications from, from the CRM. Um, in this case, um, the second option where we would normally have some criteria, you can be a little bit um, less stringent on this because this, this will only apply if the sort start date is the date that it's going to occur on. So in this case, we could have all deals. Although again, you can add in criteria for other fields. So we could do it, for instance, if it's closing uh, on a certain date or within the next few days or whatever it is. But in this case, we're gonna go with all deals. And then our actions that we have are to set the next step, which you'd seen before. We're gonna add a tag of on tour, and we're gonna set a task of the tour has started for, for this account. So these ones will all start on this tour start date. 
You can also see that I put a scheduled action in this case. So, and this scheduled action is going to execute two days after the date. It's going to check, it's going to set a task to check with the account name or check how the tour is going with them two days afterwards. Okay, so let's um, let's just see how that one's going to work. So let me cancel that off. And go back to our deals. And I just want to click in here and see which one was that I initiated. Okay, so I um, I set this one up earlier because uh, date-based workflows are hard to demonstrate. So here's our tour start date, which is today's date. So that's when the workflow is going to trigger. So the 2nd of February, 2021. And in the workflow that I showed you, it initiated at 10.30. So we'll go back and have a look at that. So now whenever, whenever any of your records hit that date, so in this case, that was today at 10.30, then the workflow will initiate. So let me show you that. At 10.30 today, I didn't, I didn't have any interaction with that. I was busy doing this workout. So 10 minutes ago, the on tour tag was added. The next step was updated to check progress of the tour. And the task tour started for account name uh, was created. So tour management start. So it's going to occur on 10.30 on the tour start date. It's going to execute for all. It's going to do the field update, tag, and task, and also execute a scheduled action for a two-day follow-up. Uh, so I'll do some more testing on that one, but again, do your own test and play. Um, it does work a treat, so I clearly just not check the right record. I did see it, but then I didn't. So uh, that's just one of the things of doing live webinars. Um, uh, so sorry about that, and we'll, we'll get that fixed. Okay, now let me just cover on the uh, final one we're gonna cover today, which is uh, best leads with our score-based workflows. So let me just briefly talk about lead scoring. And again, we'll cover this in more detail in, um, in another workout. But here's our scoring rules. And we're going to use our leads module for this. And what we've said with our scoring rules is that if the lead is from Norwich, we're going to add 10. If the phone field isn't empty, we're also going to add 10. First name isn't empty, we're going to add 10. And our lead source is external referral, then we're going to add 10 points. So you can see here we've got our four um, different elements for lead scoring. So let's go to our leads, and I'm going to show you that in action. So let's add a new lead. Uh, let's go with um, Pete Daltrey. Combination of the names, I'm not getting it wrong. Let's go with a who. And what we said is that if their city is Norwich, then we're going to add 10 points. So let's put Norwich in and save that record. And you'll see that the scoring rules have kicked in. And we scored 20 points because the first name is an empty. And also they're from um, Norwich. And then the second part of the scoring rule. So let's go to scoring rules. Was the lead source's external referral. So let's go in and add that one. So here the lead source is external referral. And then our score will increase to 30. So scoring rules on its own is a really good way of managing your leads coming in. But what we also want to do is manage some process sitting behind that with our workflows. So we can see now that this has increased from 20 to 30. So let's go and have a look at a workflow to do that. So let's create a new one. So we're going to create a rule. And it's going to be on leads. And we're going to call it um, lead score increased. And click on next. And when do we want to execute? Well, this time we're going to execute our third one, which is based on score. And you can see in this case, we've got increased, decreased, or updated, which is obviously a combination of either increased or decreased. Let's select increased and click on next. And we're going to go with all leads and next. And uh, we can create a task. And this one, we're going to create a new task. And let's call it lead score increased contact and then again use our hash symbol 
and we're going to choose contact lead name. We're going to give ourselves one day to do this because it's a hot lead, and we can notify and remind. So uncheck the remind. Click save and associate. So now when the root when the score is increased in any lead, we're going to create a task that says the lead score is increased, so contact them. Click on save. And let's go and try that one. So this time we're going to go into um, into uh, let's create a new one. So new lead. And this one's queen. We'll save that initially. So that one, because the first name has gone from naught to ten, we've got our lead score increased. And then if we also go in and change the city to Norwich and check that out then our lead score is going to increase to 20 and we get a new task the lead score is increased again and then let's just also try that on another new another lead so I'll go to this example one here and let's change their lead source to Norwich and refresh this record and their score should have gone from 0 to 10 Oh, straight to 30, actually, because it's done the first name as well. And so the lead, lead, lead score is increased for contact. So lead score increased for Felix. So we're going to contact them as well. So the score base ruling is also very simple. And again, you can go through on the timeline and see when that's occurred and, uh, and how it's occurred. OK, so let me just go back to the uh, back to the plan. So we've talked about creating the personal macros, which are very simple and very easy to use. Uh, we covered a full sales process, which is going through the sales stages and assigning the tasks according to each of the sales stages. Um, we covered uh, the date based workflows, um, which are a little bit more complex to demo because obviously a date only occurs at a certain time. Uh, but hopefully the example I gave will give you enough chance to go away and try that for yourselves. And uh, we've also done a little bit of a test on focusing on the best leads with the score-based workflows. So again, just to remind you where they are so you can have a play. Uh, if you go to the setup and click on workflow rules and then click on create rule and choose the module that you're working in. Then those three actions there are what we've covered today. And so you'll be able to give yourself an example uh, or play through this and uh, and just uh, work through some of your own examples for your own business. And of course, if you need any help with that, then uh, then just give us a shout and we'd be more than happy to help. OK, so let me just move on through with our cool down on Q&A. Uh, give me a good chance. So do fire, do put your questions in the Q&A now. And if, um, if there's anything specific on workflow, I'd be more than happy to show you in the last 10 minutes. Uh, just while uh, we're looking at that, uh, we've got some upcoming one-hour workouts for you there. Most Tuesday mornings at 10 a.m., um, not not every Tuesday morning, <laughs> Duncan and I are hoping that we can go on holidays at some point this year. Um, but uh, upcoming, we have um, creating amazing analytics and dashboards. So a lot of our clients now are using Zoho Analytics and also the inbuilt CRM analytics to do some visual displays in their CRM. Uh, so we'll be covering some of that. Um, we'll also be diving deeper into Zoho Analytics, which is a product that a lot of our clients start to use after around about six months, a year into their CRM, they'll start to use analytics quite heavily. Uh, Duncan's a real expert now at web forms and integrations with the website, so he's going to be covering that session. Uh, and then we're going to go even further into analytics with some really amazing dashboards that are available uh, to, to, to you all and also to your clients and also on big screens in the, in the office and so on. Uh, we're also seeing more use of the mobile app as we go forward. So we're going to be covering the uh, additions and the features that you might not know about in the mobile app. And then this year, we're also going to be covering all the new features in Zoho CRM as well, starting with uh, with Wizards. So yeah, there's a lot coming up. And uh, let me just have a look at some of these questions now. Um, so uh, Duncan's covered the macros questions. Uh, where it says some of your staff can't create macros, so yeah, this is a permission thing. So when you go into the setup and permissions, you'll have to enable macros for the particular user. Uh, it says that mass email, mass update, 
and creating activities permissions need to be set but i cannot find okay well if you yeah duncan will help you find uh the details that you need chris as normal <laughs> yeah so chris uh, duncan will give you a call after the session so that you can start to use some of this stuff in your crm uh certainly know this will be handy for you in terms of things like renewals and everything else and duncan's confirming super stuff okay so um, let me just move on to my final one. Thanks again for attending today. I hope you're enjoying our one-hour workouts. Uh, workflows is, is a really powerful part of the CRM, um, but that also makes it you know, a pretty intense session. So we have worked hard today in our workout, and uh, thanks again for attending. Uh, just, just like Chris has just asked, you can always send your request to support at targetcloud.co.uk and uh, one of the team will pick that up for you and help you build the workflows or just help you get started or duncan will also uh, be available to do a one-to-one -one training session if you want to go into more detail we also love our reviews uh, so if you go to targetcloud.co.uk forward slash reviews then you'll be able to um, post something on google or leave us a linkedin recommendation or if you've been a zoho user for a little while and you feel like leaving us a review on the zoho partner page then we really do appreciate that. It really helps with uh, with growing our business. Uh, and also you can follow us on LinkedIn. Um, so that's, uh, that's um, yeah, uh, thank you for attending and hopefully you'll be able to, to follow up with some of those. Um, Duncan and I will leave the session open for the next five minutes, but hopefully you're all cooled down now and enjoyed our workout. And um, if you want to disappear, then we shall see you next week. Um, and as I say, Duncan and I will stay online until uh, until everybody has left or wants to ask questions. Thanks again for attending and have a great day. Thank you.